Welcome to the Die Bar of the IWC. Welcome to Wrestling on the Rocks, episode one. Uh, again, I'm at Raf Marsh. We are at WOTR, the show. With me today to go over this bill towards Survivor Series on our way to Survivor Series, we got Bishop. What's up, dude? Thanks for having mm-hmm. me on. Episode one again. Yeah, um, nice uh, debut. Yes, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Here for the latest time, not the last time, nor the first time. It yeah. is episode one. <laughs> uh, let's start a little. Let's, let's ease into it, man. When do you drink? When's in your glass? It's early in the morning, where I'm at. Noon. Yeah, and I, I think when we, when we do these shows, we do the old uh, last cup of coffee with the first drink of the day. So a little tequila and coffee. That's exactly what I got here. I got my uh, coffee. I put a little of my uh, keto creamer in there. Put a splash of pumpkin spice sugar-free in it because I'm a basic bitch. Right. And then I put like a shot and a half of the Terramana on Yeho in there. Oh. Dude, I'll be honest with you. The mixing of it is incredible. It adds a spiciness to it that almost comes off like more cinnamon than anything. It's insane. I told you, man, you get that on Ajo in your hands, it's a it's a game changer. It's fantastic. <laughs> Dude, it might as well not even be tequila. It might as well just be like sweetener. It's so good in the coffee. Yeah. It's a little expensive yeah. for me to be putting in coffee, so I do like to have like one glass of it and like treat myself. Um Compared to the Reposado for me, at least what it is out here, it's like 40 bucks for the Anejo and 32 for the Reposado. Well, the thing about the bottle is like you can drink all of the bottle. Right, but then you got to buy another one. (laughs) Yeah, but you can have more. You don't have to drink it all at once is the thing. So if you put one shot in a coffee and you have all the rest a different way, you got to try it. Get the whole robust flower, the bouquet of Terramana drinks. (laughs) We're um, pre-recording this, so if you're in the comments, fucking cave in, bro. Yeah, because just said Kuro's in the chat. (laughs) Yeah, just been like Reaper's coming through, saying hi. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, Justin, we get it. You didn't like it. (laughs) Oh my god, Justin, with the comments over and over. Uh, Get out of there, dude. (laughs) 
But yeah, uh, it's uh, Thanksgiving weekend, so we're going to be going around. I'm actually going to be driving probably when this drops, or maybe I'll be in the hotel. Who knows, man? You looking forward to Thanksgiving? Oh, favorite holiday of the year. Every year. I'm cooking up a storm already, getting prepped for for Thursday. I saw you're brining a turkey. Yeah, man. Just took it out of the brine now. It's got a rinse, so it's not yeah. all briny. Yeah. yeah. There's a shitload of salt and brine, so you got you to gotta get all that off of it. That's why I cut it in half. I brine with half the salt and then brine it for an extra day. You just extra time, less salt? Exactly. Hmm. Well, I'm, I'll be honest. Dude. I mean, I used to brine turkeys all the time. It was like a thing I did like five or six years in a row. Uh, and if you rinse it well, there's it, you wouldn't know that there was salt involved. My so only like concern the... is how much penetrates the skin and the meat itself. So that's, at least for me, that's why. Because the first year I did it, it was... I, I I don't remember what I guess it was two cups of salt was in the original brine, and yeah. uh, and I've cut it back to a half and I can taste the difference, uh, you know. But we'll see, we'll see. Yeah. I hear you. It sounds well, like you're a professional. You used to brine turkeys all the time. I mean, that's that's a hell of a lot of turkeys to brine. Yeah, we did it every year for a while. But like, I mean, well, that's the kind of the idea. The salt isn't actually meant to be the, the salt's not the marinade. It's just the the basically the airflow to put it. Yeah, simply. The, it makes it porous. Yeah, yeah. It opens well, and everything it, up for it. Yeah. And it pulls it in and out of the turkey. So the juices are just like flowing through the turkey, adding a juicy layer. The coolest part about it, three days later, you're still microwaving this turkey and it's still juicy like day yes. one. Yes. All other forms of making turkey, you're not going to have that. Exactly. So yeah. I would no, that's, everybody that's, brine it. Yeah, that's exactly Brine what. on, you crazy diamond. That's what I think. <laughs> No, I love it. I when I got my Traeger grill, I uh, sponsored, not sponsored Traeger grill. Uh, do you want to no. sponsor, please? Um, I wanted to smoke the turkey for Thanksgiving, and I did that, and it sucked because I didn't brine it. And then I was like, "Well, let me brine it." And then I brined it, and the recipe called for two cups of salt, and it was way too salty. So I did it again with one cup, and uh, and it turned out to be okay. Uh, but to your point, yeah, uh, the last two years I made two turkeys. Because it stays juicy for so long yeah. in the sky with diamonds. You know what I mean? Yes. So. Yeah. You got to ask that turkey if that turkey's feeling oozy. It's going to be. <laughs> I'm going to be got feeling the juice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're going to San Diego. We're going to go see my my nice my grandmother. And cause I think we talked about it on episode one at some point. My My grandfather passed away this past June, but we used to go out there as much as we could to see him on Thanksgiving. It's always been our favorite holiday. Uh, I don't know, man. I think it's going to be a good trip. Just something feels off. I don't know. So we'll see. We'll see how it plays. Okay. Watch, watch me get like a fucking flat tire or some shit. What? It's going to be some bullshit. <laughs> something. Something's going to happen. I'm going to get robbed or something. I'm going to get mugged. What? What? I got my COVID booster, and she thinks why I'm off. No, the booster makes me stronger. <laughs> How do you think the Borgs happened in Star Trek? COVID booster. Basically, I have robot now. You never saw the Borgs in Star Trek? I never saw Star Trek. What, you watch sports or something? Yeah. <laughs> Oof. So you know how <laughs> wrestling is sports entertainment? <laughs> You you lean towards the entertainment. I lean towards the sport, and then we kind of meet in the middle uh, <laughs> at yeah, professional wrestling. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's good. That makes sense. That makes sense. Does producer lady ever work? What the fuck? Why is she over there chatting around? She works from home. She works from home, so she can always hear me, always be listening. She can make sure if I drop anything, she's out here to make fun of me for it. Like that's why she has to work from home. She was like, I can't be leaving the house with him alone in there. I don't know what he's doing. I don't know if he's being disgusting. <laughs> you leave one shit stain on the couch and suddenly, suddenly you're the bad guy. Right. <laughs> That's why I bought a robe. <laughs> But, you know, whatever. It's fine. The couch is cleaner than ever. So what are you going to do? <laughs> Find other places to shit now. That's what you do. <laughs> 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 oh, 
don't know what she's so upset about over there. <laughs> I just watched that movie Me Time last night with Kevin Hart and Mark Wahlberg. And Which one? Two... Me Time. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. And uh, he shits on the bed. So yeah. the, the idea of shitting on the couch or new places to shit, it's like, what? <laughs> fresh in my memory now. <laughs> it's like that always sunny. Where they woke up with that turd in the bed, and the whole episode's like trying to figure out whose it is. Right. It's like walking around with it in a different turn. Tupperware. Mark World, I don't know if you saw the movie, but Mark Wahlberg tells Kevin Hart, take an upper decker. Yeah. And so they, they go to the toilet, and there's no tank. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a tankless toilet. It's, so just, good. it's like just shit in his bed. So good. <laughs> Oh man! All right. Well, speaking of shit, there's a lot of wrestling to review. Sort of. I don't know. We're getting towards Survivor Series, dude. So I talked about it last week. Uh, tell me what you think. I think that there is the Survivor Series funk of fandom where we all know we're getting the Survivor Series. We have to build it one way or another. When you announce that you're going to have a war game before you announce any of the story, the next four weeks of story is, oh, so how are we getting the war games match? Because right the i mean i guess you're you're kind of like they're put in a bad spot right like you want to have a match that means something and give people enough time to know it's coming to plan for it or get tickets and stuff like that but you also haven't gotten there in a story yet like it almost feels like all oh, this story should have been told four months ago and then you get to this point and says i want a fucking war games match and people go oh shit here we go let's do it at survivor series you know what i mean <clears throat> well yeah but, and i mean people have to kind of like refresh their brain here that um just because vince is gone doesn't mean things kind of change <laughs> like this is that vince style booking you know extreme rules is coming up let's have a kendo stick match like it's survivor Street. they're selling wwe and they're selling war games they're not selling the feuds but that's yes. kind of how pay-per-views have always been People come to oh, see WrestleMania, always, but for a while, yeah. But you know what I mean, though. It's like yeah. it's it's it was, and I get what uh, Triple H is trying to do because he's supposedly getting rid of the Hell in a Cell pay per view as a name. Mm -hmm. So building towards the Hell in a Cell, I get it, you know. But you literally call this Survivor Series War Games, like, you yeah, know, it's the same fucking thing. Yeah, you know, you're building towards the War Game. You're selling the spectacle. They're selling yeah. WrestleMania because they want WrestleMania to be sold. And we don't even know what the main events are yet, you know? So it's kind of the same thing. And yeah. Vince has been doing that for years. Yeah, it's like, it's it's like what do they say? That there's sometimes a stadium needs a match or uh, versus a match that needs a stadium. It's that same kind of a deal. Like, we're trying to build, how do we build towards war games versus does this feud need war games? And so... Well, right. And, and we kind of talked about that a couple of weeks ago. It might have been on episode one about how, how do we get Imperium and the Bloodline to mix with Sheamus and the Brawling Brutes, that kind of thing. Because I was going for the six on six there, but that was the, it was Brawling Brutes and Imperium that deserve war games. They should have, like, oh, I'm going to find two more mates. You find two of your best mates, and we'll go into war games and end this once and for all. That's the feud. Well, storyline wise, yes, but I think character wise, I don't think Imperium's at a place yet to be trying to do gimmick matches. They're still, they're still building the idea that they find the mat sacred and that, you know, they're anti gimmick. You know what I mean? I it says the Donnie Brook match. I mean, was Imperium in a Donnie Brook match? That's that was the match at Extreme Rules. Imperium was in that one. God damn. <laughs> All right, well, put him in war games then. Fuck it. <laughs> but that's <laughs> that's the last that. time they faced each other. But to shoehorn in the story to make this all make sense with the bloodline, like. All right. It's going to work. It's definitely definitely going to work. Um, and it's better than taking all the past champions and bringing them to Roman. Um, you know, but they spent more time with the damage control and Bianca stuff. And I don't think that's paying off better than how this feels with the men's match. So it's not. And to be honest, they're starting to get goofy about it. Do we know where SmackDown's going to be this next week? SmackDown. Friday. Where's it going to be coming up on Friday? I have a hunch. Well, they were just... It's probably pre... No, it can't be pre-taped. 
I don't. It's got to be close to Boston, down. maybe Connecticut. It's got to be right. That's kind of like the thing right now. Friday was it? Oh my god! Why don't they tell you words? Oh, my god. oh here we go. Season twenty three. Oh my god! How are we doing it this way? Friday. Oh my god! This is for. Wait, no, yeah, we're good. Hold on. Here we go. Connecticut. Uh, this one's going to be in Providence, Rhode Island. Same thing. How close is Providence to Boston? Providence is not. Okay, so here's the deal. Because like, here's the rumors, right? Everyone's oh, all like, well. It's all New England. We're, let's just jump around. Fuck it, man. Let's just talk about all sorts of stuff. Because we're already on it. We're already on it. So um, Bianca has this promo at the end of the night on Raw. And she says, oh, we're going to announce who the who the final member is going to be on SmackDown. And the crowd boos. Everyone boos at home. You boos. When I boos, you boos. We boos. Cheers. And I saw someone online say, hey, if it's not Sasha, then you have to announce it on Monday because you can't be – in her hometown and then have someone else come out. Well, she's not from Providence, Rhode Island. Right. Providence isn't Sasha Banks country. It's not, it's not Bankstown. You know what I mean? Like, right. Just kind of puts a, a wrench in that theory that I saw floating around out there. It has to be well, Sasha. Cause Survivor now because Series, because Survivor Series is in Boston. So. Sure. You can announce but somebody else before the show. She's like from fucking Kansas anyway. You know what I mean? Oh, maybe. Like in real life, she's like from Kansas. Like Carmela's from Boston as well, but you know, she's from Staten Island. Like, no, like, come on. She doesn't yeah. matter anyway. Well, there was that whole thing where supposedly Carmela stole Liv as a person for her gimmick. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I didn't know that. <laughs> that was one of the things going around for a while. I'm not trying to like feed the fuel to some sort of rumor thing, but uh, Liv had made a snarky ass comment one time on on something about how Carmela Carmela t- stole her actual identity as her gimmick, and she was like, "I'm actually from <laughs> Staten Island, and I'm actually dressed like that, and I actually am loud like that." Like it was this whole thing where like Carmela shows up on TV pretending to be Liv it was kind of like the concept, and I was like, "What the fuck is that?" Well, you can't be from Staten Island now. Well, that's where I was born. What do you want me to do? <laughs> I don't know. It was. It was. I guess funny. I'm from New Jersey I'm now. Like, yeah, <laughs> I guess I'm from Jersey. Yeah. <laughs> Which, to be honest, Staten Island's much closer to Jersey than it is to New York. Not geographically, but in terms of amount of garbage per square inch. I mean, you know, driving distance too. So, oh, maybe driving distance. Oh, this it's all. It's all ferries and buses, right? Something like that. I went to St- Staten Island one time. They have a really nice uh, Dairy Queen in the ferry station. That's my favorite part of Staten Island. Seen it. That's good. All right. Uh, but, yeah, so I'm not trying to feel, and I'm sure that by now they're both completely in different places, and I'm sure there's no actual feud, and they're probably friends and laugh about it, but there was a there was a thing there one time. But, so, yeah, it just makes me wonder. So, yeah, if Survivor Series is in Boston, which it is, <laughs> You can still announce somebody else on Friday. You just couldn't announce them in the pay-per-view, right? Like, if it's not Sasha, I'm saying. Let's say, theoretically, it's not Sasha. If you wait till Survivor Series and you say, hey, you'll know it when you see it, then, yeah, you can have a huge reaction if it's Sasha from a hometown appearing there. But if you're going to announce it any day before the actual pay-per-view, then your location doesn't fucking matter. And who it is is irrelevant to that. To a degree, unless they have somebody from Providence, Rhode Island that I'm unaware of. Honestly, it has to be Becky or Sasha or even the other one that I don't want to name. It has Chelsea to be. Green? Sure. Um, <laughs> I'd rather be her. Yeah. But it has to be somebody so big that it's worth the wait. Because yes. anyone else, it's not worth the wait. Put them on fucking TV so we can care. I mean, honestly, uh, even even Mi Chin, uh, this one right here, Mi Chin, uh, 
Yeah. Uh, getting her back is good that it happened when it did. So we've had some time to get used to seeing her, you know? Yeah. So it's going to be someone we don't need time being used to seeing again. And yeah. uh, I'm just, I, I, I don't know. I was, I was looking forward to seeing the completion of Bianca's team on Monday and it didn't happen since it didn't like, I really don't fucking care. Like as big as Becky Mark as I am, I'm like, all right, great. It's going to be Becky now. Like, yeah, you know, probably. It's probably like, well, what, it, what happens when it's Emma? <laughs> Fine with that too. Like I will have the same response. Okay. Yeah. Team's filled. Okay. I'll see you Saturday. Yeah. Dude, also, I mean, that's the other deal, too, is we we decided a while ago we were going to record today to do this thing, and then while we're watching, you and I are both kind of like, well, I asked you to do it before because I was like, okay, once the teams are both filled, I want to talk about that. I don't want to miss that. By the time we're back, right. we're talking about Survivor Series. We're talking about building the teams. We're talking about everything. At this point, then, the episode when we come back is going to be a pay-per-view review anyways, premium live event review, more realistically. Uh, and then and then it's going to be like, yep, they had added the person on SmackDown and moving on. Like we're now right. it could be something that's like, oh, shit, here we go. Let's talk about it. What are we excited right. to see? Where's the bad blood? I've seen a lot of people throw around Liv as a possibility because it's on SmackDown. It could be Liv now, which I agree that Liv's character has gotten to a point of extreme, extreme Liv. Uh, that it could make sense for her to be in a War Games match, but her character doesn't have any beef with anybody on Bailey's team. They've had little to no interactions almost ever. Right. Right. You know, and not to any sustainable storyline. Like, they've probably had a match here and there. I think she had a match with Bailey once, like in the Thunderdome. But, like, no, there's no story there. So it's just like, oh, we're putting her in here because she's extreme. And she'll probably realistically not be a bad addition if that's true because she will do crazy stuff and crazy live will be fun. And then seeing crazy live with crazy Nikki face to face will be fun, but you won't be like invested so much. You're just going to get a lot of a uh, highlight real stuff after the fact. You know what I mean? Yeah, I agree. I agree. That's why like, I, I just think they dropped the ball and I mean, I don't know. We can't really, or maybe we can, when you, even you look at the survivor series team versus team, right. Or brand versus brand. Yeah. We kind of knew the competitors, more than a day out like yes and that's what they're leaving this to and again i, I don't know I, I guess for me because i like thanksgiving mm-hmm. i am looking forward to it right so everything i'm going to think about now is just thanksgiving i have zero desire to think about what's going to happen on smackdown because they were supposed to do it on monday i was yes. talking to somebody on twitter after after raw and uh i was like you know what was it us as the fans that filled in the blanks that they were going to announce it on Monday? Or did they tell us Monday the the next person is going to be announced? The last member is going to be revealed. You know, like, did we did we tell ourselves that? But if not, we were at least led to believe they were going to announce it on Monday. And to close the night, the final half hour of the night, and not give us the payoff, it's like, fuck. Yeah. I definitely saw a graphic somewhere that showed uh, the Oscar versus Rhea thing. And it, oh, you know what it was? Someone has screenshotted their, um, their like ticket sales thing. Like when you're, when you live in town and they, you buy a ticket to WWE, when they come back to town, they send you an email saying, here's the, the matches you can expect to see. And someone um, had screenshotted that. And in that advertisement, it said that, you know, the final member and it said uh, the the positioning of the advantage. It did say that in that. So that probably was circulating around. So we all saw it and thought, oh, shit, there it is. But at the same time, card subject to change. Maybe people who put their gra- together that graphic just thought maybe they originally planned to and travel plans got fucked up. And they said, ah, fuck it, we'll push it off till, till you know, like maybe. Yeah, no, I, right. And I get all right. that too. But I mean, consider it like, I uh, like it, the absolutely. Up. Like AEW did with the Elite. Look how well that worked. Just have a little graphic where they just reverse Thanos dust <laughs> on the screen. <laughs> it was all right. Um, no, from a, from a must see standpoint, the fifth member of a team is not as must see as who's going to challenge Roman for the title. You know what I mean? Like why, 
the fact that they gave them the main event of Raw and not give the payoff, because we, we even talked about it during the main event. Um, is there a chance that the fifth member comes for a save? And yeah. once I saw damage control in the locker room, I was like, no, nah, it's not going to happen. And then they got me again. Damage control was at ringside out of nowhere. Okay. And then Bianca and them come to the, or um, Rhea comes down and, and Mia Yim comes down and everyone's there except for the fifth member. Yep. Does the fifth member come in? And, and at that point I was like, man, is it going to be Nia Jax? Like she, is she's going to be big enough to come through and just wreck everyone. Right. Yeah. And, you know, so my brain started spinning and then the fucking it went off the air and I'm like, what the fuck am I watching? It went off the air while they were calling a replay of what had happened. Right. Like they didn't even finish. Oh, come back. Oh, my God. Pandemonium. It was just all like, oh, here, look, take a look at this. It was almost like they thought they had another 30 minutes left. It was such an abrupt ending and it wasn't the abrupt ending like chaos is ensuing. It's a replay of the chaos that already ensued that you're breaking down. Like, that was the sloppiest way to cut out. Unless something happened timing-wise and the brawl happened way too early and they were supposed to cut off with the melee, but by that point, people were walking away or something. Like, I don't know. Like, it, timing was way off. Corey's in the middle of a sentence. See what happened here on this replay? What? Yeah. It was really jarring. And it felt like they doubled down on just, like, how did I word it? I worded it well to you the other day. Fart gun. Well, fart gun was how it ended. <laughs> well, that's true. It did kind of end all. Um, let me see how I put it. Double down on disinterest. That's what it was. They seemed oh, disinterested. Yeah. They made us disinterested. They came out. Yeah. They were. She was even building her whole team. I got this person. I got this person. I got this person. You saw that person. Oh, we're ready. We're ready. We're ready. And wait till you see the fifth member on Friday. And everyone went boo. And then Bailey comes out like, fuck you, dude. Fuck you and your team. Fuck everybody around you. I don't care who your fifth member is. And then everyone's like, <gasps> and they go, but let's do the regular match now. It was like, what the right. fuck? Like they just kept teasing that they might and then just definitely not like it was fucking weird and an awful way to end the show and a waste of a main event realistically like and i tell you the even the promo with bianca oscar and alexa was rough it was and, and alexa's pretty good but she's she's obviously playing second fiddle yeah um Asuka may have been a little bit over-exaggerated, as she is, but I did find her delivery pretty good. Yes. Um, you know, but it was like, no, Alexa Alexa feels out of place here, and Bianca is, is not carrying this. It was bad. It was bad. Bianca was saying a bunch of stuff I didn't feel like she believed in. Asuka, or Asuka seemed like she was way up here energy level, and Alexa was the exact opposite, and her line's kind of sucked to begin with i don't know if she could have done anything with it but she was just kind of like i guess i have to say this now like it was weird right right it was like it was like the structure was bianca hold court alexa chime in oscar get them ready and yeah when it doubled back to bianca and i mean we we do it even here right when we use the same terms or we're leading up to the same sentence we try to use a different word so you don't repeat what you're saying. You don't want to say cut a promo a hundred times. You know, you don't want to say, you know, work a leg a hundred times. You go, you, we try to say Bianca wasn't even wasn't doing that to the point where we can like where it felt natural. She was talking to us. It was like it was just it was. And when I reveal the member, it was just it was really bad, man. Really bad. It was really bad, especially that I mean, we've been talking about how good. They've all been doing in this stuff. Yes. And I think that Bianca's yes. a much better talker than she gets credit for. And then this happens and you're watching it. You're just going like, oh, fart gun. <laughs> you know? but yeah. I mean, that's how Raw went off the air. And I think that it, 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 um, yeah, I think it provided a disinteresting promo to uh double down on you should not really care about what's going to happen on smackdown the other thing they did so much on raw and i didn't get was they kept playing the video packages for survivor series they played clearly the video that's going to open the show twice once in a commercial break and once they just cut to it right. they 
played a bunch of graphics and broke down every single match over and over again, that there was probably an hour's worth of TV that was just a commercial for Survivor Series and not a commercial for Survivor Series as in build for Survivor or tease us to Survivor Series, literal right. commercials of Survivor Series. And you go, okay, we, we get it. So it kind of like, it felt like to me, an extension of what I said last week of it. They're, they're kind of phoning it in as they get to survivor series. We have to get to survivor series. So let's just do these simple steps, get there. And then the real build is afterwards. And this raw felt really, really phoned in like almost like they wrote two thirds of the show and then said one third, just run commercials extra. Honestly, had they revealed the fifth member in a way to get us invested I think that changes your opinion because yes. it, it did feel like everything else they added just a little piece too. But because this women's war games build has been at the forefront and closed the fucking show, there's an importance on the story, but nothing changed. Yeah. Who cares about the advantage? Not only that, the main roster isn't educating us on the advantage either. No, they're not letting us know how devastating it can be. If, uh, Bailey starts out and Rhea comes in second. Yeah, you know they're not they're not giving us any of that. So what what do we what do we as what do we as fans care about the advantage? And not only that, I said this before the match started, and it's it's really weird that we're uh, I mean it's an episode one, who cares? But we're starting with the last thing that happened in WWE uh, instead of going back to to SmackDown. But my fault, whatever. Um, Asuka and Rhea had a really bad feud. Yeah. When Rhea came up to the main roster. Yeah. This was probably their best match. And I was so disinterested. Yeah. I didn't care. And I, because their feud I was so bad the and their mania match was such a, such a disaster. I mean, it wasn't a disaster. It just wasn't good. And it wasn't that was, and it was neither of theirs best match. The idea that after all that, it's all like, Ooh, now we're getting another Oscar Rhea. I was like, I don't want that. And that's all. the thing. And we, and we both, and I'll, I'll speak for you. We both hold the two of them in such high regard. They are capable of some of the best wrestling. And the two of them working together doesn't work. They are bad with each other. I say that Stone Cold and Undertaker have never had a good match. They had yeah. great feuds, but if you watch their matches, they're not fucking good. There's something yeah. about chemistry that didn't work with the two of them, but they're captivating. And Rhea and, and Asuka could be that level of talent and execution with story and matches as the same as Undertaker and Stone Cold, separately from each other, maybe. But even this match on Monday was really good, but I didn't care because I haven't been able to care. And then when it came to even getting to this match, I didn't fucking care. Yeah. Yeah, it was. And yeah. I don't know. And it also didn't make sense that that's who you're picking for your advantages things. Like I could get Bailey's team saying, let's give the biggest and baddest to get us our advantage. But for Bianca to say that, so Bianca's character thinks she's the absolute best in the world. She is the EST. And for her to not go in there trying to get the advantage, when you have a fifth member that's fucking mystery, you have Michin in the back getting her ass handed to her. You have Asuka and Bailey, or not Asuka and Bailey, Asuka and Alexa pretty much on a losing streak. And you go, yep, let's put our losers in there. Not the hot young talent that we just got up here to prove what they're worth. Not the champion who's been the one of the second longest reigning Raw champion of all time. Just this person who's been losing matches lately and was in a terrible feud last year that culminated to a WrestleMania match that nobody remembers happened. It's like, yep. Yep. of course you're going to lose it. That was the other thing. When Asuka went in there against Rhea, I was like, okay, well, Asuka's clearly got to lose this. And Rhea's been dominating. Rhea's been body slamming Luke Gallows. What's Asuka been doing? You know what I mean? Like, it's just, you didn't build it to a, a point where you even said, like, oh, shit. The advantage is important, and this match is going to be great, and who could win? Right. None right. of that was on the table. So it was just all like, how did you guys phone in an entire main event? And for Bianca to, like you said, she's the champion. I You could even... Because if I'm not mistaken, it wasn't Adam Cole that fought for the advantage when he was champion. But you can hype up your contender yeah. to a point where you go, 
no, no, I'm I'm the best. But even Oscar, I have by me. There was nothing about Oscar that that felt special in that moment. No, and it wasn't like I'd be afraid to face Oscar right now. I'm glad she's on my side. It wasn't that exactly. at all. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So I don't know, man. That was that was a bad way to to end Monday. But on the flip side, Friday was awesome and just dripping with story. Just dripping with oos. Juicy oosy drip. Hey, is Sammy Zane any good? Fuck yeah, dude. dude. Sammy Zane's the one. <laughs> Honorary oos. Uh, so the Brawling Bruce comes out. They have Drew Mack and fart with them. Did you notice also, was it on Raw? Yeah, on Raw. Drew's been doing a lot of fucking bad guy shit still. He sucker punched Baron, and then he fucking uh, uh, cheats during the match, and they even have to call it on commentary. Drew really bending the rules here. Corey even That's said it at the beginning of the match, what is this psychopath doing swinging the sword around? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. He must listen to the show. Good friend. Friend of the show. And then Drew tries to get Broody chants going. Four people in the crowd say, go Broody, Broody. And he goes, oh, you guys really like that. It's like, no, four people liked that. Like, <laughs> Drew responds to the crowd similarly to Gargano. They hear four people and think it's an entire stadium. You know what I mean? Like, yep. they're not reading the entire crowd. They hear some cheers and they go, oh, the, the crowd really popped on that. You go, no, some people cheered, but they all sat still and clapped for you. Because they well, were. Hey, you got you to dress for the job you want, not the one you got. You know what I mean? Yeah. Which, by the way, before we, <laughs> before we really get into this, the Gargano's entrance, they did the long, the long shot from, <laughs> from the whole arena. <laughs> For his entire part, the fucking Gargano word is going. They have the new music, which is the same music, but a new singer, which is really weird. And then it just so says Gargano, Gargano, Gargano. And it just stays long shot like the John Cena shot. Let's show the crowd when his music starts. It was literally that. And you could have sworn it was a fucking photograph. It was me. It was <laughs> and I was just, getting introduced. <laughs> yeah. It was a photograph until you realize the Tron is moving. You see Johnny barely just a just a <laughs> fraction of a human just <laughs> jaunting out there to literally no sound, no reaction. You could hear the music crisp. That's the yeah. other thing. When people posted, like, look, you got new music. No one said, ah, it's hard to hear. Right. <laughs> I heard all of it. Just perfect audio setup to hear the music perfectly no interruptions no noise or movement to get in the way of you seeing what his entrance looks like it was the exact opposite of when cena's music starts and they pan the crowd and you just see sections of the crowd at a time fucking jumping up throwing babies just the whole thing this one they were like holding their children tighter and saying let's get out of here Yeah. I just couldn't stop laughing during it because I was all like, oh, shoot. And then after a while, I was like, they're just holding that shot waiting for a thing. They're like, wait for it. Wait for it. And I was like, they already know, guys. They already know. If they were going to do it, they would have done it. They know. <laughs> they absolutely know. Yeah, it was great. Oh, my God. It's so good. But dude. Drew McIntyre and the four people in the stands. Yeah, so Drew gets four people to say broody. He feels really proud of himself on that one. Sami Zayn comes out to an actual massive crowd reaction. Here's the thing, dude. How much? How much do you love? As much as they've been pushing Drew McIntyre as their top good guy, and they've been trying so hard, and it's just such a scattering of moments here and there that Sami Zayn has actually done that. Actually, made himself the biggest good guy they have. No matter what he's about, he's the exact opposite of Dominic right now. When people hand Dominic a mic, they all start booing. They don't want to hear a fucking word of it. As soon as Sami Zayn 
shows that he's holding a mic, the crowd gets so loud in anticipation and cheering. And then they just get silent to be like, we got to hear every word he says. They are hanging on everything. And I love that Sammy did that so naturally and organically. And it kind of proves that there are times that even with the machine behind you, you can't fix stupid. You know what I mean? (laughs) (laughs) You know, and it just doesn't connect because he's, it's just, just this one point, just like I've said over and over again, he just doesn't correlate what he's saying with what he's doing. And it comes off disingenuous so much that I think that the crowd's not buying him. Go ahead. Well, I think, okay, so I'll go quick with the, the Sammy thing. I think in real time, it felt like Sammy was put with the bloodline oh, shit. for the sake of no direction. Let's see what happens. So yes. I do, I do agree with your point that this was organic. Um, I'm curious to see though, or at least hear what the start of that was. Cause Roman just did an interview where he was like, Sammy's the fucking best. Yeah. Um, and he brings a lot out of all of us. So I'm glad it's all working. And I think I agree with you though, that it, it has been Sammy figuring this out. Cause if the origin is Sammy, look, we got nothing for you. Uh, let's see if you can disrupt the bloodline and go from there. Like I, I just, I want, I want to know what that conversation is. I think um, it came from Sammy. I think Sammy was all like, hey, guys, what if I started interacting with... Because the other thing is that Sammy's pitching stuff all the time. Every single right, thing with Johnny Knoxville right. was all Sammy. So I think yeah, they're yeah, very yeah. open to listening what he says because it seems to work. Whether they agree or not or like it or not, just let him do it, dude. It's working every other time. Let him... Let him keep, it's like a no-hitter. Don't talk to him. Just let him do what he does. <laughs> Nobody look at yeah. him. Just let no, him no, pitch no, that makes sense. Yeah, it's it's a great idea. So I'm glad it's working out. Um, yeah. Drew. Also, Usi in the sky that. with diamonds. Before you move on, Usi in the sky with diamonds. Are you kidding me? Amazing. I had no clue what it meant until he posted the Beatles thing on Twitter. So you don't. You've I never heard of the Beatles? Beatles? No. 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 But if he said Usi going to give it to you, you'd have been like, "Oh, I get it." Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> No, I didn't. I didn't grow up with the Beatles. I didn't grow up with the Beatles. Uh, my parents never played it as a kid, so um, mm. you know, it didn't. It didn't hit with me. But um, anyway, the Drew stuff. We've been talking about it for probably two years. Yeah. Uh, on how he doesn't connect with the with the fans, and I know you've you've definitely taken him to task on. I think it was episode one, maybe a couple of them, to be honest, on how he doesn't act the character, or if he does. He's like, hey, this is the character that makes sense. I'm going to be a robot. So for me, I think Drew needs to figure out what the fuck Drew is. You can't be... I. Some people say... I, I've, heard, I've heard actors say this about Ryan Reynolds. You can't be good looking and funny. You, you can't have both. You can't have it all. You can't be good looking, funny, and know how to act. How do you have everything? And what I think Drew is trying to do is have everything and just go, look, I can do what I want because I'm Drew McIntyre. Well, you're not. Like you're yeah. you're the Luckily you're he's the, not funny at all. But he thinks he is. He thinks he's a he stare. He thinks he is. <laughs> he thinks he's and he thinks he's imposing. He's six foot five, scary Oddish, uh sc- scary Scottish. And uh, like you can't be strong, athletic, good looking, powerful, and funny. Like he tries, to, he tries to mix all these characters into one, and it's so fucking confusing. Because when he swings a sword, he thinks he's being funny and ironic, but he's not. He's being a dick. But he's being a dick in a way where, like, it's distracting because it's not. There's nothing going on except Drew McIntyre. And what is Drew McIntyre? He's a guy who does all this dumb shit. So it. I, I don't get it. I, I don't get Drew McIntyre at all. He, no. he hasn't done a thing to make me give a shit about him. He's trying to show me how good he is at everything. So I'm supposed yeah. to like him. Like, no, I, I don't like you. Yeah. Uh, Danny, Danny McBride's talked about that as far as like, you can't be good looking and and funny, but not in those terms. He's talked about how he has to put on his comedy weight because so much of his characters are just assholes and pompous and arrogant. 
which if you're really good looking and your tone and you look jacked, then you're an asshole that nobody likes. But if you do the exact same thing, but you're chubby and you kind of slip on a banana peel kind of a thing, then it's funny because no one takes you seriously. Right. Where when you are those things, for some reason, people take you seriously. You talk really highly of yourself and they go, well, obviously he believes that. Where when you look a certain way and you say the exact same thing, they go, <laughs> this guy gets it. He's funny. Right. He knows. He gets it. He sees his face. You know what I mean? Right, right. So when Drew goes around trying to think that he's funny and talks about how amazing and good looking he is all the time, people say, yeah, fuck you, dude. Yeah, you do have it all. Fuck off. Right. I don't have any of it. It's why we hate Austin Theory. That's why we can't connect with Drew. Because Austin Theory is 24 and his fucking shoulders and arms are bigger than my chest. Dude, they did that shot of Austin Theory when he was watching the screen. And I just could not stop looking at his tricep. It was so huge. I was like, oh, <laughs> fucking God. He looks got like turkey legs for arms. He's doing great. He's doing great. That failed cash in on the U.S. title was the best thing that ever happened to him. It gave him a fucking story. It did. And the promos he's been cutting after that, amazing. amazing. I would say amazing. anybody. Anybody who said otherwise must be an absolute tool. Yeah, absolutely. They may have said it last week on this show, but I'm just saying it's it is the best thing to happen to him. And you can for me, I saw that shit from a mile away. And I said, this guy, it gives him a fucking story. It gives him a reason to say something. It's the best usage of it. And they he doubled down again on Roman not being able to cash in on him because he's got it hijacked and all that shit. So he went to be opportunistic. And and then even Lashley helps him out in storyline. It's fucking working. Yeah. It's and working. Seth did too. So that's like I don't <laughs> yes. even think that it's a bad cash. And he goes, I was, I mean, I'm the king of it, and I'd have done the same thing. He goes, and it's, it was all handed to him. He goes, it was perfect, and he right. still <laughs> fucked it up. So it's all like even Seth put over that everything that theory's doing makes sense and is smart, but he right. still keeps getting fucked over. And so you're so like, we should yeah. listen to what they're saying. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Anyway, I wasn't we're talking totally about Smackdown sold on the idea. He sucks. Of the cash in because that's obviously there, but I was really curious of like what is next because this feels weird. And the the answer to what is next is like the next big thing, but yeah, fuck you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Drew McInfar's out there. Oh, you guys feeling broody? Hmm, let's get real broody in here. Broody. Sammy comes out and says, Do you want to see how to actually cut a promo? And then does it. And he goes, do you hear all that? That's just crowd <laughs> cheers. Must be new to you. I don't know if you've heard it. It's deafening in here, is it not? It wasn't before, right? You could hear every one of your leaky farts. Sorry. He's probably a nice guy. Uh, I did like Seamus on the mic. I thought he was doing awesome here. He's such. I'll tell you this. So real quick, though. I felt like once Drew did his thing, he took a proper backseat. Yes. To Seamus. And Seamus flourished in that moment. Seamus is amazing in that moment. He did such a good job. And I thought that this was an amazing moment to highlight just how capable Seamus is. I saw even, I want to say it was like, I don't know who it was. It was I think it was Alfred Kanoa. He was like, oh, if you had asked me about the Brutes, Brawling Brutes being a, a baby face, by the end of the year, I would have never even tried to believe it, but they're doing a great job with it. That's what I'm sure. And I think all that has to do with Seamus and Seamus's delivery, Seamus's ability to connect with the crowd. Even though people think that he's not connecting with the crowd, he sure as shit is. He knows what he's doing. It's almost like he's been a professional for 20 something years and goes, oh, you want to see how the, to get the crowd to cheer? You can do it this way. Or you could get them to boo doing this way. Like he knows how they're going to react to what he's doing. And he puts on the best effort every time. Since Cardiff, yeah, they've been riding the babyface wave. So what the fuck mm-hmm. was that guy even talking about? Like, yeah. if you watch and you pay attention to presentation and execution, they've been riding the babyface wave since Cardiff. Yeah, but they could have easily gone back to back to bad guys because they are just brute asshole guys. You could have easily gone right back and just been like, yeah, that was a good moment. It was a moment in time because of where they were. You could have, but they haven't been. And I'm glad. Seamus deserves to be cheered yeah uh so good do you and seeing seamus and and zane and i like seamus telling uh to the last thing you're going to expect the whole thing the tease who's it going to be who's it going to be 
move on though. Let's see. What do you think about Shane, uh, uh, Rick O'Shea and Mustafa Ali? I want the tag team. I think they'd make a better tag team. I want the tag that team might give Ali some kind of purpose. When, um, when the hurt business became a thing and Shelton and Cedric became a tag team, we cared. When Ricochet was with Alistair Black, we cared. When it looked like Mustafa and Cedric were going to be a tag team. It was like, oh, this shit might be fun. And they never did it. Yeah. So there, there is a thing to some of these people just teaming together that makes it feel more important. We can be a fan of these guys all we want, but why do we care? And if yeah. them as a team gives us a why do we care, I am all for it. And that's, yeah. I would love to see the tag team. I also think Mustafa's been putting on size as well as Ricochet. They both looks look like bigger. it, right? Yeah. 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 Mustafa looks a little bigger. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the match was great. Uh, yeah, honest. it's gonna be. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's see. Afterwards, you had Madcap Moss in the background working out, and then Emma coming over saying he looks very vascular or something. I don't know. I wasn't listening. I don't. Emma's been there for three weeks. She's had one match, one canceled match, and she's been flirting with Madcap for for two weeks. This is the big return we were excited for. This was the changing of the division. This is the big. It's all about me. Is it? No. No, I'm it's not... possible it'll get somewhere at some point, but I'm I'm good. And I was I I really liked Emma before she left, before she changed into Emmalina. Yes. I was I thought she was that secret agent thing that she used to have, I thought was pretty cool. Um, but I do think man, the women's division's so fucking good. She's gotta step her fucking game up. She's yeah. gotta step her game up. Because she definitely feels like a fish out of water when she was there beforehand. She didn't. Right now, she does. And if she can have more confidence in those little videos in the back, sure. Um, But she's got a ways to go. Yeah. Yeah. And why we only had the one match? She was supposed to have a match against Xia and we never got it. Right. Right. Fuck. Do you think... This is wild speculation. Do you think Emma's performance in Ronda... That they had already cut the promo for Xia and ran it. But after reviewing the match, you said, Let's keep her out of the ring for now. Maybe we could make her Madcap's ballet. Because I'll be honest, I it's... was an asshole on this very show. After we saw her match with Asuka before she got released. Because I did it with her and I did it with Peyton Royce. They said, that match was so bad, I wouldn't be surprised if we never saw them again. And then they were both released within a week of me saying those things. Uh, it was what it was. Yeah, I remember the Peyton one with Oscar. I don't remember Emma's last match with Oscar, but it was, good thing. it was like a, I think it was in a TLC match. It was like an opening one. It was like right at the beginning of, I think it was Oscar's first match on the roster. Oh, okay. And it was to set the precedent that like, Hey, she's the street match, continues. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. Which actually might've been before the show, but it's definitely, I said to Kev, uh, but yeah, it was like I was like I remember calling him and being like, "Dude, I think she's done." Like, how do you have a match like that <laughs> on the pay per view? Like, what the uh, fuck? And then she uh, was. Uh, so I think I wonder if and when she came back, I was like, "Oh, this isn't like a massive improvement." She's like better, but not by a shitload. And like you said, fish out of water. I'm wondering if they're just pivoting and saying, "You know what? It's not that we don't want you here, but maybe we can utilize you a little bit better. You're not a bad talker. Maybe we can help you guys both as a unit. Maybe you can help talk. Maybe you can do." The cross and scarlet thing, add to and the they're together in real life, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So maybe you can add to that presentation the way that Scarlet yeah, yeah. adds to Carrion's presentation. I don't personally believe that Carrion needs Scarlet to come off the way that he does, but I definitely don't think that she takes away from his presentation at all. She absolutely adds to it. Mancat may need Emma to help him get over. It's but yeah, it's possible. I think I think Madcap is too high energy. To slow himself down, uh, like yeah. when Mojo would go Mojo, but then have like the Dean promo, you know, yeah. where he's more himself. I think he's more developed in that that way of talking than Madcap is. He knows how to turn it on and off, uh, even though supposedly Mojo's Mojo all the time. So, <laughs> as far as I can tell, he's pretty Mojo a lot of the time. But it, yeah, if uh, if Emma if Emma can help, great, you know. But like I said, she needs more confidence. On, yeah. on TV. Maybe she's just not used to being in a, uh, on the big stage 
Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm cool with seeing where it goes, especially if they don't like you're basically like you're saying, they're going to invest less time than they planned on it to get acclimated. I'm cool with that. You see mm-hmm. how it goes. They're both talented. It just it just has to look right. Yeah. Yeah, he's got to plug it in the right way. Uh, although the match itself, uh, Cross just beat the shit out of Moss again. Moss looked pretty, pretty dominant pretty early on, and I thought it was he's just so good. Yeah. Uh, his gear looks like uh, Avatar version two. Like if you go to create a wrestler, I think it's default Madcap Moss. I think so. And you go, okay, build from here. Yeah. And you go, nah. okay, yeah, I'm, yeah, I need a lot of work. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Increase chest, lengthen hair. Done. Yes. Yes. <laughs> like which which is the right beard? Which is the right beard? There it is. Uh yeah, go from five eight cross... eight two and then you're cross... good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, cross didn't need to lose to Drew, but I here we are. It feels like all that shit happened with the extreme rules story just to just get back where we started. It yeah. feels like cross is starting over again, man. Like how many times is this I'm... dude gonna start over? I'm so out on cross, man. Everything he does just doesn't I, I was trying to say this too. It, it's, but who, again, who is he? Who is he? At least in NXT, it because everything was so dark. He felt like he had like a, a Jason Voorhees thing to him, where there was an extra level of power within him that emanates to his opponents, where he can no sell because his character's that strong. Yeah. And on the main roster, he is a guy who wears a leather jacket who wrestles, and there's nothing special about him. Even the way Scarlet, they're like, basically what it is, they believe in this concept that time is strength. And when they decide your time is up is when he is at his most powerful. That doesn't make sense to me. Because if mm-hmm. I decide when my time is up, then you're not that powerful. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like, there's there's nothing, there's no substance to them. And they're, they're not giving anything extra to tell me that Karrion Cross is a thing. No, he's just a guy who wears a leather jacket, has a fucked up haircut. Yeah, his hair gets all messed up. I like he puts a lot of hair product in there, so by the end of the match, yeah. it's just like, like <laughs> doing like kind of a Gene Wilder thing. Yeah. And his wife talks in these riddles that are supposed to amplify this character, but that you you haven't given me the thing. You just you just say some shit. Yes. Yeah. Which is why I think if he had beat Drew, at least you would have been like, This dude is pretty dominant. Look at all the stuff right. he's doing. Him losing right. to Drew, I think, definitely halted. Because nothing's going anywhere. He's losing the feud at the end. You kind of go, I guess he's just kind of a crazy dude here who's tough sometimes and other times loses to guys who fart all the time. And remember, I think we talked, I think me and you talked about this on episode one, that uh, Drew and Roman have this similarity between them. And the thing that was happening when Roman was getting booed while he was a babyface, you know, Triple H calling mm-hmm. him the best heel in the company. Strowman was better for it after he lost at the end. Bray yes. Wyatt was better for it after he lost at the end. Yep. Sheamus was better off for it after he lost at the end. Mm-hmm. These Drew doesn't do that. Baron Corbin had to get a masterful reset yes. to be better for it afterwards. Drew's like and, a Charlotte dude. Yeah, he's a black yeah. hole of the men's division. Yeah, he's a black hole in the men's division, and everyone's worse after working with you. Yes. Yes. Cross, what what did working with McIntyre do for Cross? Seriously. What did it do for him? Who's ever faced Drew that afterwards anyone went like, yeah, but that guy now. It's always right. been about Drew. Right. Yeah. That's weird. Uh Bray Wyatt. I was so mad I wasn't here last week to talk to you about this. What do you mean? I li- I listened to you and you and Justin talk about how LA Knight and Bray Wyatt and what is this going to do? And I'm like, oh, these motherfuckers just don't wait. Just wait. It's the thing is this. Just fucking it's ex- wait. It's going to be amazing. exactly what I just said, wait. though. I said this exact thing. I said, what's going to happen here is you're going to have amazing promos go back and forth. They are two of the best to ever do this kind of thing. However, we just got LA Knight here. I don't know if I need to see him losing and getting steamrolled by Bray, and Bray has no connection to LA Knight at all. So it just leaves me with a big question mark. What happens what? after that? I think the big <laughs> the big question mark is that Wyatt even said the decision you're about to make right now is going to change the rest of your life, which is good and bad in the same regard because we're still learning who LA Knight is. For him to go through a massive character shift now, 
doesn't mean as much as if we had gotten to know who LA Knight is for the past year to two years. All the booking happening right now by Triple H feels like that he is booking as though every single person who watches the show has seen everything on NXT. Yeah, I agree. And secondly to that, that every single person who watches the show imagines that the things happened that he wished had happened, not what right. actually happened. Right. I can see that. And that's the problem with this is you're already looking at potentially making a massive shift to LA night and the crowd doesn't even really get him yet. To your point, but stay, it still stay, could stay be right amazing. there real quick. Stay, stay right there real quick. To your point about him doing that, uh, the person who plays LA night, the reason the crowd wasn't responding wasn't because he wasn't LA night. It's because we didn't get to experience him perform. Yeah. And what you're saying is Triple H is like, well, the reason why they're not connected because he's not LA Knight. It's switching to LA Knight. Okay, now everything's fine. Mm-hmm. So I'll, I'll agree with you there because it's that's what's happening with Johnny. They're like, oh, well, fuck, it's Johnny. We got to put him on TV because that's Johnny. They all know Johnny. Well, well, we yeah. don't. And he also sucks. But when you guys were talking last week about how, you know, what is this all going to be? I'm like, Marsha nailed it on the head. It's fucking promo time. Watch what happens. Because I even said it episode one, I think it was two weeks ago. I don't need to see Bray Wyatt wrestle. I've said it. The second it was LA Knight, I was like, motherfucker, I'm ready to see Bray Wyatt wrestle. This is going to get to a point where it's all going to make sense. Because they're not going to start with the collar and elbow tie-up. It's not going to be tackle, drop down, hip toss. All that. No, there's not going to be no back body drops and suplexes here. This is going to be a storytelling affair between two guys who can tell a really good fucking story and LA Knight's going to bite off more than he can chew and shit's going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah. And LA Knight's the perfect one to do it. He's the perfect performer to get us there. And to your point, yes, I will give you that. Had LA Knight done this a couple weeks from now to where we can feel more of who LA Knight is as a character, completely agree. I will take the benefit of knowing who LA Knight's been for the last couple of years, as I'm sure you will. But I see your, your perspective that the audience doesn't. Yeah. Having a slight character change in somebody who's still new. Like you do a, if someone gets new gear the second time they're on TV. You don't go, Oh, that's new gear. You go, Oh, it's uh, I guess one of their gears they have. Right. You know what I mean? Yep. Whereas if you've seen someone wear the same gear for a year and a half, and then now they have a different color scheme, you go, Oh, that's different. You know what I mean? Right. You can't make right. changes to LA Knight right now because all of it's different. We don't know who he is. We know a couple of his catchphrases and he hasn't even got him over yet. Like he needs a little more time to establish who he is to before you can make changes. So I have a feeling they're going to make some changes to him that we will appreciate that others won't. Uh, there was some really cool stuff that happened in here, though. Bray comes out, wants to cut this apology. LA Knight comes out. <laughs> He was such a fucking marmy piece of shit. I love the way he puts his hand out, slaps him, jumps out of the ring. We're even. Now we're even. Even Steven. <laughs> yeah, man, we're even. You're right. We're even. Yeah. The look on Bray's oh, face we're even. Oh. where he's like trying to like, okay, I don't want to do what I feel like I want to do. He's trying to hold himself back. I love the idea. He's like, the decision you're about to make right now is going to change the rest of your life and puts his hand out. Fucking Ellie Knight slapped him so hard, his cheek turned red immediately. And I love how he jumped back down and goes, two for one special. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. The other thing that Ellie Knight did here that I thought was masterful to the point where I went and rewatched it three times. They tried to what him, and he did not allow it because he's that good. I would venture to say. Although Bray Wyatt may be the greatest performer and actor in the entire industry. I think LA Knight is a better pro wrestling promo than Bray Wyatt. The way he builds the conflict is so much different. Bray's doing all character work and you're just supposed to believe the character wants to fight and stuff. LA Knight gets you to want to see this match. And to buy into the characters and to buy into the moment, you know, they started trying to what him and you can see him bring the, the mic down. You can see him look, um, you almost like, you don't even seem like look exaggerated around. You could see his eyes like dart a little bit where he's like with his peripherals, like, all right, they're going to try to what me. He changed right. his entire cadence. Quick calculations. Yeah. Yes. 
He changed his entire cadence, finished what he was saying to the point that because they were forced to listen to all those words, that when he took his next pause, it was a dramatic pause. You could hear a pin drop because they were hanging on every moment. He just said, what to Bray Wyatt? What's Bray going to do? Right. You know what I mean? So instead of them wetting him and trying to get trying to take over the segment, he goes, no, no, no. You're going to want to hear this. And then they went, oh, yeah, we do. It was amazing. They never tried to wet him again. He changed his cadence up, fixed it, corrected, and got them hanging by the end of his sentence. It was amazing, dude. I've never well, seen tell you, like that. Yeah. The other thing people do is they do the other shit where they feed into it. What? Right. What? And then they go, oh, if you're an idiot, say what? What? See? Hey. And then the owner goes, they got him so good. He got him so good. That's how you control the crowd. Or they, oh. yeah, they, they only change their cadence by steamrolling the sentence as yeah. opposed to, yeah. And um, I'll, I'll give you this. I, I, yeah, I've given Ellie Knight a, a bunch of shit, and and I still think he has potentially a ways to go for me. To your point, though, maybe what was missing for me is I don't need to hear him talk about himself. I needed to hear him talk about what's going on with someone else, and this promo with Bray was different. So, you know, maybe that's what I was waiting for. Is how do you, how do you apply all this shit talking about yourself? Yeah, I love the the rarest commodity around here is respect. Saying that we got a lot of things around this, these area, but nobody's respecting anybody. Or at least he doesn't feel like he's got any respect. You know what I mean? I can't get respect around here no matter what I do. And But I feel like I've earned your respect. And then to disrespect Bray after saying that we have a mutual respect. Such an asshole thing. Yeah. So good. And then That he goes two for to one leave. special really got me, man. Yeah. Dude. So good. Bray's staring off into the distance. I loved the... The meeting him in the back. Why are you rushing out of here? It's not because I'm afraid or whatever. It was so good. And then the door opens. You see Boy Howdy's mask. As he moves around, it disappears. Comes back. He's just littered in shit, including a keg. That was neat. It was tapped, uh, too, because the guy moved it with one hand pretty easily. I know. I saw that. I was like, <laughs> yeah. Or at least figured out how to mime what it looks like when you're trying to right. get something not moving. <laughs> yeah. But he just wiggled. Like, he went to tap it and almost knocked it over. Yeah. And he's like, I better not touch it. And you're like, fucking dude. Yep. <laughs> uh, but, dude, I'm so into what is this is. I am still hesitant about what this will become. Because, like I said, I don't know that Ellie Knight's character needs tweaking right now. But I do wonder if they're going to go that route. Before with The Fiend, everyone who ever interacted with The Fiend was supposed to have a significant difference in their character. It was supposed to be a character-changing mechanism. They may be doing that again here. I, I think you gotta wash it away, man. I I know I know Bray has a genre he likes to operate in prospectively, because I don't know Bray. Yep. I can talk to him. But he likes to operate in a specific genre. I I can see where your mind's at because of what the fiend was, but I think we gotta wash away that and and let this be its own thing. Um it's possible, but to think that it may go that route. You might end up missing something. I mean, not you per se, but the the collective you might end up missing something if you think it's going to go to a specific place. Because I think whatever it is that Bray's doing, he's he's ten steps ahead of us anyway. So where yes. this is going to lay out, I'm not going to guess any of those steps. I'm really just going to see where it is. I, I know that you're you yourself are a particular fan of LA Knight, so you want to see his success line up a certain way. And I mean, he's talented for sure. Uh, he needs a new finisher, but. Besides that, he, however he comes out of this, I assume his talent will put him in a better spot with WWE than he was before. They'll be able to trust him more than they could have before. And I think, to your point, specifically on that promo alone, they'll be able to trust him more than they did before. Yeah. I've been right about Bailey and Sammy for years, for the record. Yeah. And yeah. X-Pac. And Bret Hart. I was right about Becky and Roman for years, <laughs> so whatever. Uh, but I'm not saying it's going to go that way. It's just that's my hesitancy to it is because it's going to take yeah. the first match to find out if that's what they're doing because it was a, it was a, a black mark on the end of The Fiend was that that kind of thing started to, to dwindle, and that was always the, the goal of it. So to think of it as like a failed experiment, I could see them wanting to redo and repackage and realign because that's exactly that what Triple concept H is doing. Yeah. yeah. Well, gotcha. Triple H has been redoing a lot of stuff that failed. Let's just do it again, but this way the way we wanted it to be done. So the idea like of like, Austin hey, Theory. Like Theory, like Cross, 
like Gargano, how does he wish it had gone is what he's doing now. If they, if he was on board with the fiend changing people, I wouldn't be surprised if like, Hey, how about boy, how do you change his people? And you go, okay, cool. Like I could see it being a different, but, but we won't know until the first match is over yeah. to see if that's where they're going or not. And that's my only hesitance. That's my only concern, but I don't think they're necessarily doing that for sure. It's just all like, all right, we got to watch because it's going to be telling. All right. Uh, let's see. Shotzi and Rousey. With Shayna Baszler somewhere in here. It was a Shayna Baszler match. Here's the thing. I know they're trying to make it look like Shotzi has a chance against Ronda because she doesn't. And that makes sense. But I feel like they did it backwards. Because now they've made Shayna look like a fool. And that doesn't help Shayna or Ronda. I feel like what you do here, because Shotzi's outnumbered, is you have Shayna get the win. Right. Shotzi gets her loss, and then Raquel comes out, evens the odds. They do the tag match next week, and then Shotzi gets the win there. Yeah. Hey, when the, when the odds are even, you got a shot. But when the odds aren't even, you still want to build the dominance of Shayna and Ronda. So to me, it was this whole like, oh, it looks like Shayna and Ronda are kind of idiots, Shotzi got really fucking lucky, and Raquel's the focus of this. What the fuck just happened? Yeah, I, I, as soon as the match was announced, I tweeted out that no one's gonna like how Shayna's portrayed by the end of this. Yeah, because she's consistently, for lack of a better term, the the whipping boy of the women's division. She is yeah. the one who gets to look the fool. She's the one that they abuse over and over and over and over again in the women's division and she's such a fucking badass and extremely fucking talented at wrestling yeah so the fact that she consistently has to put herself in position to look like she is going to lose this match and then end up losing this match is fucked and it's always Shayna. it is always Shayna. yes and i wonder if Shayna thought that shotzi was made of glass because she was trying real hard not to touch her yeah, and that did not add to the match. Uh, so we'll just keep it moving. They did have Braun Strowman and New Day versus Imperium, dude. Everything that happened with Gunther and Braun Strowman here was remarkable. Because going into this, and even seeing the World Cup bracket, I was like, "Fuck Braun Strowman for being in this. Why are they going to do this? Do I really want to see Braun Strowman and Gunther? No, not at all. I saw this and I was like, "Holy shit, these two dudes." could put on the coolest match. (laughs) I loved the way that Strowman was selling the chops because he was trying, he, he accomplished trying to look like he was not going to sell the chops while selling the chop. It looked like him struggling to not want to give away that it hurt. And it was awesome to see that because it's really easy for them to just go, okay, I'll just act like it didn't hurt and you'll know what's in my mind. He made the facial expressions right where it looked like, oh shit, this hurt, but I don't want Gunther to know it hurt me. I'm trying to get it in his head. The back and forth, Gunther running away from Strowman made Gunther, I know people were trying to say it made him look like a chicken shit. To me, it made him look like, like he was smart. It looked like he knows he has an Intercontinental Championship match coming up sooner than later. So why get hurt? Why put yourself out there in a match that really doesn't matter? He was already, he'd already gone toe to toe with Strowman a little bit. So he knows the strength of him and he knows he's going to have to attack him more deliberately. He's going to need a strategy to take down a Strowman and a clusterfuck of a three on three match isn't going to give him the space he needs to make those decisions. I love that Gunther was outrunning Strowman so he didn't get knocked over by that choo choo train. (laughs) A choo choo. It's my Strowman. But it actually made me psyched for the idea of we could get Gunther versus Strowman for the Intercontinental Championship. And Gunther winning would make him look good. And Strowman winning would also make Gunther look good. And Gunther can actually move on to other things should he so choose. I don't think I need him to lose to Strowman, but I'm kind of okay with wherever we go with this although we do know that we're gonna have Strowman versus ricochet coming up do you think they go the route of giving ricochet a victory over Strowman and we get gunther and ricochet there because there is a story there too there there is but that's not what they're telling and to your point about the match and my apologies for not being able to chime in um whatever man no one gives shit when you chime in that's also true (laughs) 
<laughs> you and your terrible ass takes. <laughs> now it's the Splinter Fox. Yeah, shots to um, <laughs> <laughs> Who's in the comments right now? Let's be recording. He's, he, he he's probably, definitely, he's yeah. definitely not in the comments now. Definitely not in the comments uh, right now. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck this guy's on the show. Yeah. Um, the chops, because I, I, I fell for it. I fell for it. I was like, you gotta be fucking kidding me. That old Vince idea, you know. Uh, let's chop down the guy who's supposed to look strong. Um, Braun Strowman no selling that first chop. I was like, you fucking kidding me. Why is this happening? I was so fucking pissed. And then you you broke it down perfectly. Next chop, oh, it stung a little bit. Next chop, it stung a little bit. By the end of the match, Braun's like, fuck, man, my chest hurts. And I saw people bitching that Gunther keeps running away. He's not running away. He's protecting himself. He was making sure he didn't get fucked up. Because like you yeah. said, there's six guys there. He he doesn't have the space he needs to to calculate properly. These the Imperium themselves, all three of them, I, I've said it time and time again, they are the perfect version of professional wrestlers. They do everything perfect in the ring. So anything that Gunther did opposite of what Strowman was going to do was the perfect version of what he was supposed to do. He was... He wasn't being a chicken shit. He was literally protecting himself from somebody who was fucking massive. The the yeah. one one of what three guys that are fucking bigger than him. Yeah. One one of the two guys that are stronger than him. Yeah. Yeah. Let's let's not go there. Let's let's not fuck with this guy now. Yeah. I don't know if you've ever like talked with many people who are are have ever trained with fighting or anything or even like boxing. I've taken self-defense when I was the, uh, in the uh, corrections and I did boxing for a little while and I've talked to other people who did other, and, and especially in corrections, you talked to a lot of people who know different, different styles of martial arts and stuff. The one thing across the board that is pretty consistent of all fighting styles is the second you believe you're about to be in a fight, every fighting style teaches you how to create space. It might be a little bit. It might be just enough. Like with with uh, self defense, it was always like falling back on one leg a little bit, so you're now shoulder to shoulder to sh- actually to make your target smaller. And by stepping back, you've created some space so you can potentially see something coming. Right now, in this, you have a dude rushing you who's 600 pounds. You might need to create space a little less subtly, right? Because you believe you're in a fight. So for him to create that space to give him room to be able to react appropriately to not be pummeled is what a fighter would do fighters need space to do their attacks and you can always talk about you know grappling your ground to pound and all that even watch those fights they're trying to create a form of space to get their hits in and the person who's the aggressor is trying to shorten the space because they're uh, trying to not allow that person the space to defend themselves so gunther running he's trying to defend himself like a fighter would because he also wasn't like leaving the arena. He was circling around and trying to get back in the ring to where he could position himself right to do the attacks. You know what I mean? Like, so to me, it made perfect Absolutely. sense. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 It, and that's he, and when he couldn't find that way in the six man, he allowed his teammate to get pinned so they yes. can survive to the next one. Absolutely. Yep. It's a, watching Imperium is a masterclass. It really, truly is. Everything they do. I know their promos can be a little confusing because they're like English as a second language kind of thing or yes. American speak as a second language. So there's they're not as deliberate as a lot. But even in that, their structure, their tone, the things that they're delivering is like you've said before, that how they hold the mat sacred, how they this this entity of professional wrestling is so apparent to them they're not going to be the ones to weasel out. It's going to be calculated. I yes. loved it. I loved it. Guter showing concern means he knows his own limits. But yes. given time, given space, given the opportunity, he won't be afraid of him. He'll be up for the challenge. No, Gunther is not stupid. He's not. Right. He doesn't believe he's invincible. He's smart enough to know this person could get the better of me if I'm not careful. Yes, yes. Where a yes. lot of people who just rush and they want to see the people like like Drew comes off stupid. Drew will run into a fight where he's surrounded by people because he thinks he's invincible and get his ass stomped by the entire bloodline because he doesn't 
think that there's an option of not winning every single thing. Gunther is smart enough to know I may be outpowered. I have to be smart about this. The greatest story told in wrestling history. Becky Bianca, 26 seconds. Yep. Why did Becky cheap shot Bianca? Because she was out for 16 fucking months and wasn't ready to take on someone as good a competitor, as athletic, as strong, and all that shit. And what so happened what did Becky when... Do? She Both. closed the space. Right. She didn't allow space for Bianca. What did Bianca not do? Provide herself space to see something like that coming. And then what happened when they got into a fair fight? Becky loses. Yeah. It's 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 right there. <laughs> it is all right there. So I loved it. I loved it. I'm I'm excited for it. And I I my only hope, my only hope is Strowman can listen to Gunther during a match. That's my only hope. Yes. Because yep. if 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 we can get a match match out of the two of them. I'll be fucking. I'll be, I'll be fucking excited. It'd be dope. Yeah. Uh, let's see. We had Butch versus Sami Zayn. Butch ended up winning, so we're gonna get Butch versus Santos Escobar, which I think is gonna be pretty fucking cool when that happens. Uh, and the match itself was really good, and there was a lot of storytelling there. But the big thing was how the show went off. All of a sudden, well, for one, you had a stare down between Roman and Sheamus, where Roman took Sheamus seriously. That makes me happy. Remember when Austin Theory came out and Roman looked at the crowd like this and was like, who the fuck is this dude? And he was like laughing in his face. When Sheamus stared down Roman and started taking his suspenders off, Roman's face got real serious and he started nodding. And you know what he did? He created space because he thinks he's about to be in a fight with someone. He's not sure if he can win. Body language is part of storytelling. Language is language. Jackasses. So Roman starts circling around. He's trying to create that space. He's trying to feel out his opponent. Sheamus is not someone to be taken lightly. You know, schmoz happens. A lot of stuff's happening. Boom. KO comes out. Big moment. Big pop. He's the new member of the group. He's part of the crew. We were saying it before. I was even saying it last week. I thought that KO was the obvious shoe-in, but with rumor of injury, who knows? But I also said, if there's any way he can be in it, I'm sure that he's going to be in it. And lo and behold... Marshall's right again <laughs> because Bruce Pritchard, who's in the comments right now, if you look, is a big fan of the show. Um, <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. KO comes out and has a stare down with Roman. And what does Roman do? Gets real fucking serious again. In this one segment, Roman put over KO and Sheamus as potential competitors that he might not want to face one on one. Yes. He doesn't always give that appearance no matter who he's going up against. Correct. He didn't take Drew all that serious. He went for Drew. Because that dude's a fart. It's his favorite number two. His favorite number two. <laughs> <laughs> it really does give you the one you need when you need it. You know? <laughs> Every time, dude. It's gun, weird. It's random, the gun but it knows. gets the right one. <laughs> the gun, the gun knows, fucking man. knows. can feel it. <laughs> but yeah i love this dude i love that by yeah. the end of it i was like holy shit la knight and Bron bray white is going to be incredible holy shit braun Strowman and gunther i have to get eventually one way or the other oh my god we're getting butch and santos holy shit ko and sheamus staring down roman i'm saying it right now dude i said it before i think somewhere maybe who knows put roman in the elimination chamber have him gun through everybody but put bad motherfuckers in there put a ko sheamus Drew Mac and fart. Fuck, put Cross in there just to throw him in there, you know? Like, have, have Roman win. So then everyone goes, well, great. He just destroyed everybody. And you go, yeah, yeah. But, you know, maybe the other person they put Roman in there is like Sammy. Match. <laughs> maybe they put Sammy Zayn in there as like an equalizer to like help right. Roman. Right. And maybe he just keeps being squirrely and fucking around. People go, God, ooh, dick. He is honorary. Put Solo in there to fucking be his dude. You know what I mean? That'd be awesome. Roman and Solo have to start the match. And they just stand there. And they, they fucking strategize. Yeah, wait for they the stand there and they're just out. staring at pods. Right. And then at the end of it, it's Solo and him. And Solo bows to him. Lets him take right. the pin. And just walks out the cage. Says, fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's so good. Be 
Yeah, nope. that's why I don't I fantasy mean, book because it works. It's so fucking God, awesome. Good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's see. Uh, let's go through a little bit of raw. I'm gonna see on here what was saying. Judgment Day and Brawling Brutes. The opening stuff with, with KO. That was all good. I dug it. I don't know where we're really going. The Brawling Brutes feuding with everybody. It, yeah, I mean, you know I mean, who knows? Maybe coming out of this, we get new stories. There is. There was some. I mean, they said it about Ray being SmackDown exclusive, and they said it there too about you're on the wrong show. Um, yeah. You know, so I'm wondering if there is going to be some cross branding after Survivor Series because I do agree with you that there is going to be some type of reset coming after Survivor Series. And yeah. if I'm not mistaken, they canceled TLC, or there's going to be no December pay per view. I think there's no December, right? I think it's and Survivor Series to Rumble. And if that's the case, the that's perfect opportunity to lay out storyline heading into yeah. Rumble. So we'll see what happens. I mean, really having everybody touch doesn't hurt. No, you know, no. and they're they're pulling it off too. To be honest, I think they're pulling it off. It does seem odd, but when they are communicating with each other, it doesn't sound like conversations that shouldn't be happening. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, none of it none of it seemed like too out of whack. Also, seeing Dominic and Sheamus work together was pretty sick. Dominic is so good, dude. He's so fucking good at like being just absolutely hated. Sheamus got a huge pop for pinning Dominic. Why? So fucking good. Why? Because, because, so because we love Sheamus that much or because we hate Dominic that much. Yeah. You know, it's probably 80 20, and we love Sheamus a lot. Yes. But it's probably 80 hate Dominic. Yes. Yep. So good. And he was being such a little shit with everything he was doing, too. He's so fucking good at being a little piece of shit. Uh, also a little piece of shit. Johnny Gargano went up against Omos. I didn't like Gargano getting as much in as he did. I feel like even though it wasn't much, it was far too much. But he, uh, the right guy won. I mean, like I said uh, on Twitter to a, a fellow friend of ours at Just In Time 211, he hated the fact that Johnny he said... He said, not only did Johnny, and shouts to being in the comments there, Justin, uh, not only did Johnny get a theme change, but the fight, the walking night quill of Omos. And my point to him was, well, great wrest- great wrestlers can have a good match with anyone, right? Yeah. I mean, how did Omos look with AJ? You know what I mean? Yeah. So well, what are we doing here? How much yeah. of this is on Johnny for not being good at wrestling? Just saying. Hundred percent. I like this. The little review I pulled up said, "There's a lot of people who won't understand Miz's line about owning a cactus in California, and then it moves on, which makes me think that he doesn't understand Miz's line about owning a cactus in California." I don't understand. It was me. He owns a cactus in California. Yeah, my mom's in Maryland. She has like thirty-seven cactus. Yeah, I've been to California. There's cactus there. I don't think yeah. that... I mean, that's the other thing is that I didn't take any note of it. I don't know what it means. But if you want to be all high and mighty and say that a lot of people don't get it. Do you want to explain how it means more than what it means? Because I don't know if something happened in the news recently has to do with cactus in California, but I don't know. Uh, Mustafa Ali versus Austin Theory, we talked about some of. I did like the match, though, to be honest. I don't know what they're doing with, with Ali. They have him getting his ass handed to him constantly right now, and I don't hate it, but I also am not sure if they're trying to rebuild him. So tear him down a little bit more. Even Theory throws Ollie into Bobby Lashley, which was funny. <laughs> and then Bobby um, Lashley beats the shit out of him. Yeah, so good. Uh, I, I tell yeah, you, I, I think I think we did cover it though. I I, I do want to see Ali and Ricochet together. It, yeah. it feels like the best use of both of them, and maybe we see that on Friday before, after, or maybe never when we see the women, the the fifth member of the women's. Um, it would be nice. I, I don't know. I think it's the best use of both of them. Put Ricochet and Ali together. Yeah. It it just it feels like it makes sense. You know? It does. It does. Uh, Alpha Academy versus Elias and Matt Riddle. I am do not understand when you randomly throw two dudes together like Elias and Riddle and they take on guys like Alpha Academy and win. I just never understand it. We're still doing it. We've been doing it. 
especially because it's Riddle and Elias. This isn't Stone Cold and Triple H teaming up when they were the, was it the, I forget what they called themselves, man. I was slipping my mind. Yeah. Two dudes with attitudes, I'll call them. But like when you have two <laughs> top guys, uh, when you have two top guys, two champions teaming up, then it makes sense why they would be dominant. These are two dudes who are still really trying to feel themselves out coming in and just dominating the tag division when you have an Olympian in there and their whole thing is about how Otis is better than ever now. Like I just didn't get it. Two man um, power trip. Two man power trip. Yep. 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 There it is. Um, Corbin. Yeah. We talked about Corbin. Well, to your point, McIntyre. to your point though, but, I, cause I, I do want to jump on that. They could have lost and allowed commentary to say they're a new tag team, but man, did they take the best out of Gable and Otis? They mm-hmm. really might have something going here even yep. though it doesn't make sense because even Corey's been saying it. He wants to get him to play the drums and all this shit. And, um, you know, uh, Corey's like, Elias is the only person that can make me miss Ezekiel, like, which I thought was fucking hysterical. Yeah. And then to, to have them have the match, you can, you, you get out of it. You can get out of it with them losing by saying they just started tagging. And even though they shouldn't be together, they almost did it there. This might work. Yeah. Yep. But instead, they just win, and you go, okay, I guess Alpha Academy sucks. Right. Uh, the Corbin Drew McInfart stuff. Dude, I don't understand how they take a Tazawa and repackage him to look like he did when he was serious on 205 and then make him the same joke he was before. Yeah. That's just a new outfit. That's all it is. Yeah. He's still goofy as fuck, and I didn't appreciate that. I would have liked to see him just have, a, like, put Tazawa in a good match against a Chad Gable for no reason. Fuck it. I don't care. Something that makes you think he's not just there for comedy. Honestly, he could have been in the World Cup for Japan instead of Nakamura. Yeah. And have him versus Santos. That would have been fucking awesome. That would have been great. Yeah, put him in the tournament, make him serious through the tournament. How and many this guys they problem... built through tournaments and gauntlets? Right. Perfect. Right. It, that was This was part of my problem with the Drew McIntyre stuff and and how he's kind of phased in here. And no, it's not Vince with the booking, which people (laughs) have some some shit on Twitter (laughs) on Monday night, too. Like, fuck, is Vince back? Um, McIntyre getting the win over Corbin in a way where Corbin was actually winning the match. Yeah. They laid it out nice. And Corbin was going to get some type of redemption. You couldn't have had the fuck up, confuse Drew McIntyre, and then allowed Drew to get a sneaky win, even though he was winning the match. I'm sorry, uh, Corbin to get a sneaky win, even though he was winning the match. Like, okay, you don't want Drew to take the end of days, you know. So, but the, fuck, man, it just it drives me nuts. He's the only person to kick out of end of days, but you know, ne- you don't give Baron Corbin that win back. Yeah, the end of days would have pinned back, but the deep six never pins anyone. And it almost pinned Drew McIntyre in this match. Yeah. It was the best false finish on the deep six. So shout out to Drew McIntyre for that. But uh, fuck, Baron Corbin's too good to keep going through this shit. I don't get what they're doing with Corbin right now because I feel like he's having really competitive matches with jobbers. And then he's losing when he goes up against a name. Yes. And I don't see how that's rebuilding him. I wonder if, do you think there's any possibility? Because I don't see how you would actually do it successfully. But it feels like what they're trying to do is build a world where Corbin has to turn on JBL or JBL has to turn on Corbin as a this isn't working kind of deal. And maybe you get JBL and Corbin in a match at Mania to kind of like let JBL have a little little farewell, as it were. But I don't think you need it. And I don't think that Corbin remains the heel in that story. Like, I don't think we need a baby face. Or I don't think Corbin would even work as a baby face, especially knowing how much he like feeds off the hate. He's a sister. So, so yeah, yeah. If, if we zoom out and refocus on JBL and this whole thing is about JBL and not Baron Corbin, then Baron Corbin's the perfect person to do this with. I'll give you that, but I'm not, I've never been a JBL fan past Bradshaw. I thought him and, uh, the APA was perfect. It was the yeah. best of him, period. And it was it was fun. It was hateable. Everything. Everything about it. The yeah. JBL stuff, I, w- I wasn't watching that. And when I went back to watch it, I was like, all right, whatever. You know. 
So I'm not invested in him. But if this is for JBL to get his stone cold moment, you know, to get his sting thing, you know, the, these, the older wrestlers now are seeing how the younger talent can take care of them and give them one last moment. If that's yeah. what this is for JBL, by all means, Baron Corbin's the perfect guy to do that with. Unfortunately, what's coming to us is a rebuild of Baron Corbin, and that particular story isn't fucking working. So if it yeah. takes Baron Corbin to go, hey, man, you were supposed to rebuild me. This is fucking bullshit. Let's get out of this. And it leads to that. Absolutely, I'm all for it. The particular story in front of us, though, like I always say, take what's on TV. It's not working. No. It's just not working. And how awful was McIntyre's future shock DDT? It was bad. So bad. bad. It was bad. It was bad. And I saw the Claymore coming from a mile away. I was like, oh, okay, so here comes the Claymore of it. Yeah. Yeah. So awful. But people out there listen to me shit on McIntyre. I gave him credit, man. His his sell on the deep six for that long two count, I mean, it was perfect. Yeah. That was it. Yeah. (laughs) And then there's the main event, which we started the show on. So, yeah, I mean, it really puts me in a weird spot where, like, SmackDown had me coming out fired up for like six matches and then raw had me coming out like really confused as to what the fuck we're doing here with almost every segment except the opening one the opening one's kind of like okay well i'm not sure why exactly we're getting the brutes and the judgment day but you know like you said we could do some cool stuff with this the teams are are good but all the gargano almost stuff had me wanting none of it austin theory we're still just letting him go through his motions of doing what he's doing which is great but is that it's not hyping me up for Survivor Series, you know? And then well, Alpha they did Academy work in losing the, stacked. Corbin they did losing work stacked. in the triple threat for Survivor. Are we going to go over Survivor Series? Let's do real it quick. Do it like yeah. a because they I thought that they did mix that in pretty well because uh, they did the three promos of Theory, Seth, and Bobby on what's going to lead to the triple threat. So oh, that's right. That's right. That's, yeah, the Steph promo, what, the Bobby promo. Go, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's that's kind of how they tied it all together. But I see what you're saying. There was a big disconnect because I I like you and and <laughs> I like you. No, I like you with commas. Um, was looking forward to Raw and them stopping some sort of storytelling leading into Survivor Series. Give me a definitive of what I'm going to look at going forward. But what they ended up doing was. They left the women's match open ended. They left the um, the the beginning segment of what's supposed to be the men's war games match open ended to what's going to happen afterwards without mm. necessarily locking in what's going to happen next. It's a uh, yeah. So it's a big cluster throughout the night. Yeah, yeah. Because so on the card we have. Well, maybe we'll go this. Oh, this isn't even. Son of a bitch! This isn't even accurate. I hate these fucking. No, I did this other one and I tried to pull up the WWE.com one and I couldn't fucking find it the way that they have it normally. Mm -hmm. Let me see if I can. Because usually there's like, hey, here's what we're doing. But the last one they posted was like eight days ago. So, you know, it's not going to be up to date on it. Yeah. Let me do the Wikipedia one. What do they got here? Matches. All right. A little more accurate. Uh, but yeah, so they did have uh, Seth Rollins, Bobby Lashley, Austin Theory, and a triple threat for the U.S. Championship. I'm, Are you seeing five the, matches listed? Five matches listed, yeah. Yeah. All right. I, uh, I think it's going to be great, and I don't think I care who wins at all, because I think I'm fine with all three of them being the champion, but I think also, because I look at it, all three of them are bad guys. Yes. Yes. That was going to be the point that I brought up to you. I think it would help solidify Bobby a little bit more to have it because it would solidify his particular heel turn now, yeah. which has been happening since Brock. But then I think about Theory and Seth and where do you go from here? Yes. As, yep. a, as just a feud together. So now uh, Seth gives Austin Theory what he did with Cody and Edge and all that. Yeah, I think Seth could move on pretty straight away and start talking shit on Roman and maybe get himself in the Elimination Chamber match like we were talking about before. Right. But 
Yeah, I think that I think it's got to end up on Bobby or Theory, and I think that this would solidify Bobby as a badass who really likes that title and doesn't like people having it and kind of give justification for all the bullshit he's been pulling. But also I think Theory could definitely gain a lot from winning it because it was a failed cash in. And then this is all like, look, it was all part of my thing to get this thing. And then you have Seth be mad at him and maybe you get Seth and theory for a little bit with the title involved. I think I fantasy book it this way. I think you get theory hit Seth with the a town down. Bobby takes out theory and pins Seth. Then theory has the leg up on Seth going, I was going to pin you. Bobby fucked me up. I'm going to bust your ass. Seth goes, no, I'm going to bust your ass. And Bobby moves on with the title. Yeah. And I, I, mean, you, I think that's the cleanest way to get out of that. And with the most investment in all three guys. That's true. And then Seth and Theory can be busting each other's asses. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. For a while. Yeah. I can see that one. Uh, we then also have AJ versus Finn. Dude, this is going to be so fucking killer. Yeah. I don't even care I, about anything else. I just hope the outside <laughs> doesn't affect inside. It definitely will. I just hope it I doesn't know. affect too much of it. Right. Like, like I kind of want the OC and Judgment Day because I think the women should not be there at all because they have a match to get ready for or they will have just been in a match. I can't tell which. Right. Right. Uh, but I do think that Damian, Dominic, Luke, and Carl should be on the outside. They should be fucking around and then they should get like thrown out of ringside and so you get the finish of the match pretty clean throw them out early so we can see the bulk of the match without because i don't want them thrown out and then it's the distraction finish that would suck yeah that's true that's why I uh ronda shotzi <laughs> i mean ronda's just gonna win it and you just hope shotzi looks good i hope both of them look good well it's true well ronda doesn't need to look good she still has her name and that's been enough so and then uh, you have the two War Games matches. Brawling Brutes, Kevin Owens against Bloodline. Fuck, going to be sick. I think Bloodline has to win here. There's no other way unless unless they give Sam or um, Sheamus the, uh, the Raquel treatment where they give some type of opportunity for Sheamus to look so good he has to challenge Roman next. You could have Seamus pin Jey Uso. That'd be the only one, huh? He's the only one you can take a pin right now that would be storyline credible. Except Sammy could. He's taken a number of losses because Jay's getting in the way. And you right. could have Jay allow Sammy to get pinned. Like you could have a bunch of stuff happening. And you could see Jay's right there while there's the pin happening. And you could see him second guess stopping the pin and then just letting it happen and then pointing out like well he fucked up you know what i mean like either sammy or jay but it has to be at the cost of jay jay would have to be involved in the finish of them losing because then it would start right now it's a lot of uh you know a lot of bickering between the kids as it were and it's only costing sammy matches right now but if you cost roman a match well that could really heat this up Especially if you cost Roman the match and tried to frame Sammy in it. Right. So you know how War Games usually plays out. How do you see these big guys being down long enough for someone to get pinned and not the pin get broken up? Like you have Sheamus, you have Drew, you have KO, you have Roman. Just those four guys alone, and no disrespect to the rest of them, but those four guys alone are hardcore main eventers that mm-hmm. two of them have to be out of the way while another two are executing the pin. It's going to be yeah. crazy. You have Drew and Roman punching each other. You have Solo going in there to get the better of Drew, and you have KO on top of the fucking thing doing a swanton onto all of them, and then they're all just out for a while. Kevin Owens is a mean motherfucker. <laughs> and then Seamus pins Jay or Sammy. Yeah. Is EO going to jump off the top with a trash can on her head again? That's going to be I th- awesome. I kind of think she might because I've my understanding, uh, which is, you know, kind of a obvious thing, is they need a lot more main um, roster footage of war games for them to promote again later. And right now all they have is mostly empty arenas 
Right. And is Ray going to have a real hammer or a fake hammer this time? It's going to be a rubber chicken. <laughs> it's going to be a straight they up rubber chicken. They have four of them. <laughs> yep. That's true. We know they have them. What are them the now. chances? Yeah. What are the chances of that? <laughs> <laughs> you would have HBK on commentary. Oh. I uh, I think that they're going to redo some of the stuff because, yeah, you only have people who yeah. are not in the company or things in empty arenas. Here's a deal, too, and I know I'm in the minority. I fucking hated that EO Sky spot with the garbage can. I thought that was stupid. Didn't I make any it, sense. Yeah. It made no sense logistically. It didn't course, play out yeah. to make any sense. <laughs> yeah. And it also looked kind of like dumb for no reason. Are you actually, you would do more damage by standing up there and throwing the garbage can at people than putting yourself inside of it. Right. It just didn't make any sense. Oh, like, this is stupid. No. It's for the GIF. What? No. Dude. So take into account Triple H, right? Yeah. What if all this is just for Candace? Oh, that'd be so stupid. <laughs> Can you imagine they announce Candace and then there she all comes out and everyone goes, Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I just had that thought because in that same one, I believe that's the one where Candace broke her arm, but she still like led the entire match. Yeah. She called basically the entire war games match, but she broke her arm on that fucked up spot. I think it was Shotzi who had the chair in the wrong place or I whatever. Thought, I think it was Ember moon. Wasn't it? It might've been, it might've been, um, but it was fan. I mean, Rewatching that war games and watching Candace just be a general around the whole ring was just a, it was awesome. It was, it was so fucking arm. cool to watch. Um, might have to go watch that this week, whatever I'll be cooking, yeah. put it on in the background. I, um, if they honestly wait till Friday to do this after they got booed for not announcing it. And now at this point, the bubbling of the hype is so big. Honestly, if they bring out Candace, I think she gets booed. Right. Right. I think right. Emma would get cheered though. <laughs> uh, look, if if we learned anything as fans, and and I I'll speak for everyone. I don't fucking care. Yeah, yeah, and you should. It's the first note of the music that's going to get the reaction. It's not the person. So it has to be the giant graphic. It has to be the the sound. Mm-hmm. Even if it's Liv's laughter, you'll get a pop. It might go down because Liv isn't Becky or Liv isn't Sasha, you know, but the, it's going to be that first note that's going to that's going to hook the crowd. And there's only there's only a handful that's going to do it. Yep. Yep. And I really, really don't want it to be that other one. I, I really, really don't. It, it, it would. It would make me so disinterested in the match. <sighs> I know because I'm thinking like how oh, Bailey's in the match, but would I even want to see it if I know that they're going to put so much on that possibility? But at the same time, Triple H, my favorite quote of Triple H of all time was, Get out of here, Charlotte. This has nothing to do with you. <laughs> <laughs> and all my time favorite, quote. favorite promo from Bianca Belair. Mm. You don't even go here. Yeah, you don't even go here. Yep. And what's the worst promo? The worst thing that Vince McMahon ever said or ever even did, personal or professional? Charlotte Flair. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the I mean, investigation I, should be about. If, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, honestly... It was more non-consensual than anything he got fired for. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't agree to that shit. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody <laughs> wanted that. Nobody <laughs> wanted it. You can pay off consensual shit, but that non-consensual shit, I need to be paid for that. I want some free t-shirts or some shit. Yeah, I need t-shirts. I need t-shirts. I need merch. Uh, but yeah, uh, anything else? I think that's kind of what we got going on. Survivor Series coming up. By the time people hear this, we're just going to be a couple days away from 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 smackdown and uh yeah and honestly look I, I think i think to pay off anything to add excitement it's going to be and I'll, I'll say it it's either going to be becky sasha or or charlotte 
to pay off the excitement. If it's not one of those three, then it's, I mean, hit the gun, man. Like it's, if it's not one of those three, then it's, it's, it's fucked up. It's stupid. It's not going to work. Even if it was like a, like an intro or a call up, I don't think it would work. You know what I mean? When they teased, not they, when, uh, cause WWE didn't, but the internet, the internet was like, well, uh, what if it's um, Tegan Knox? Yeah. That's something you tell over weeks. Yep. You give us you the backstory of Team Kick. You show us the war games where Dakota Kai turned on Tegan Knox. It was perfect. If that mm-hmm. was going to be her, you have the time to tell that. And you make the war yep. games advantage match between what two people, right? Yep. And yep. how do you have an advantage match before you see the fifth one? And let's say, let's say I'm not Bishop, right? Let's say I'm just some fucking idiot on Twitter who stands Charlotte because of who her, na- who her dad is. If Charlotte's your fifth, why wouldn't you have her against Rhea? Yep. Like, so if yep. it's going to be someone bigger than the four that are already there, why wouldn't that person wrestle for the War Games match? Right? Yeah. So then wrestling for the War Games match, what you did shows me that Bianca's a dumb leader. She's a bad leader because she didn't put herself in the match. She has the fifth person in her holster who's better than everyone else to get this big pop. Yeah, and it's, she lost advantage a, because of it. And yeah. she lost advantage because of it. Yep, yep. yep. Do you think? Uh, we think the odds are that it's Kari Sane. It's not. She just won the the. That's why it would be great. Women's. That would be great. Yeah, it would be, especially if uh, if her and Oscar get a moment together. I think it'd be amazing. Plus, yeah, she just won the NJPW Women's Championship. So congratulations! And you have Carl. You have Carl Anderson, who's the Neverweight Champion. Right. What right. if they brought over Kari Sane just for this thing? And the reason she hasn't been on TV because she was in Japan winning that championship. I think that could get a big pop, especially if they let her come out with that title on. Right. And then you and have the people wheel. really going. They had her pirate wheel. I'd go pirate nuts. wheel. I'd go nuts. I go nuts. <laughs> her little noisemaker. Um, <laughs> I do. And we might as well do it. Fuck it. Because I hate when people do this for me. So I'll just do it for them. Um, it could be Carmella. Carmella has been more active on Twitter lately. Um, yeah. You know, which I, I think would be amazing. I think and, it's great. hey, she's from the area. And they did. Uh, Bianca said last week, if you think our team looks good right now, wait till you yep. see our final member. Yep. What looks better than the most beautiful woman in all of WWE? Yep. You know what I mean? Yep. So I do think that there's a possibility of that as well. And I wouldn't be bothered by it at all. But I do think that, dude, I think that if you bring in Kari Sane with that title, you make a huge statement that a lot of people be like, oh my God, forbidden door. <laughs> right. And and it would be the same week that Kenny Omega challenged Will Ospreay. So, oh my God, AEW's work with New Japan. New Japan's work with WWE. Is New Japan the forbidden door? New yep. Japan's always been the forbidden door. They're willing to work with anyone to get their name out there. Yep. <laughs> they did an entire yep. show with Ring of Honor just to get into Madison Square Garden before yep. AEW even existed. Yep. Fucking oh, idiots. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, did you see Full Gear? Yeah. I did. I record- Maybe I should come on tomorrow night. Uh, we already recorded tomorrow nights. No, you didn't. You didn't. Me and Amanda me did it on Sunday. Oh, shit. We went and recorded it. So you guys are going to see that tomorrow. Me and Amanda Jane break down full gear. I believe I titled it full gear is half assed. We'll see how Man. the whole thing went. I only watched half of it, dude. There was a lot of stuff I was not going to watch. Like, I mean, why would I do that to myself? That'd been nice to be on that show. I don't think you even true. knew I watched it. I saw you tweet about it and I was like, what an idiot. This guy's watching all of it. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's doing it for no reason. I'm going to be on the show. What's the matter with him? <laughs> I didn't know I didn't have an opportunity to be on the show. Oh, yeah. No, Excuse me for being late to the fucking party. Yeah. No, you can't just tweet about things and think everyone's going to be knocking on your door. Yeah. I'm going to bring on Justin next week just to fuck with you. Fuck it. I don't even want to be on next week. You can have I'll Justin tell on the show. I'll tell him. I'll be all like, hey, I saw you tweet. So, <laughs> <laughs> Hey, remember that time you tweeted the wrong Justin to come on your show? <laughs> and yeah. You thought it was the other Justin coming on your I show? I definitely thought it was the other Justin. <laughs> he said no. I would have put a stranger on the show. That's the other thing. Because I would have fallen through. Oh, yeah. 
I've definitely reached out to the wrong person and had them on the show. It's not a problem. Fuck it. You said yes, let's do it. See what you got. So At worst, you're going to talk wrestling. So. Yeah. I got my fart gun. Say all you want. Talk all that shit. <laughs> All right, oh, guys. Man. Well, come back tomorrow night for a half-assed review of Full Gear as we, uh, me and Miss Amanda Jane, talk about what we saw, what we uh, what we didn't like definitely gets talked about. Uh, and there was a couple things that we thought were pretty good. I think out of the whole show, there's two matches I really liked. So, you know, two out of 14 is not bad, right? That's how <laughs> we're taught. That's what they tell us. Uh, you want to tell people where they can find you? Are you on Hive yet? Are you a Hiver? Do you have the Hives? No, because I'm not a fucking Mark or an idiot. Twitter was never going anywhere, so you guys can do whatever you want on Hive. You no, can get it's all not that Twitter's going to disappear. It just might not be fun after a while, and then we want a new place to hang. Twitter's not going to change. You're going to say words. People are going to say words back. If the words you say don't get to the people you want, then say different words. Who cares? Because I have Hives now. Right. And take medicine for that. I'm not going to download another app. The most important thing to me in my life is phone storage. I'm not putting another app on my phone. Not going to do I it. I have more followers on Hive than I've ever had on Twitter, and I'm losing them by the day. So, And I'm glad you feel special. No, I'm losing them. It's like you can, it's, it's a roller coaster ride. You get a shitload <laughs> up front, and then they just start dropping off. It's incredible. <laughs> well, be more compelling in your content. No. <laughs> <laughs> maybe this should have been a hive exclusive we should have streamed live to hive i wonder if i can stream live to hive i'm gonna try that i'll try that next week episode one on episode one yeah i am on twitter i am only on twitter at tw takes podcast you can go to tw takes podcast.com and try to buy a shirt if you feel like it i'll probably refund the money and still send it to you anyway because i have probably 87 shirts left uh other than that i'm around i'm trying to do my thing figure out what i'm going to do to make sure i can produce content at some point if not i'll just keep producing content here whatever um but before i actually sign off i do want to say again thanksgiving is my favorite holiday i enjoy the meal the environment the atmosphere it's just it is the absolute best so from me to all of those at the dive bar on the IWC, whether you are serving or consuming. Happy Thanksgiving, and I will see you after the holidays. Absolutely. Uh, And a quick shout-out to our sponsor here, Curable.com, K-U-R-I-B-L.com, promo code MADTHANKS or PWS for 20% off all of your CBD or Delta needs. Uh, If you got uh, pets, even they have dog treats as well, face masks, bath bombs. They got a massive selection of options when it comes to ability to take in the cbd so uh it's really cool check it out k-u-r-i-b-l.com promo code mad thanks or promo code pws for 20 percent off uh outside of that guys yeah enjoy your thanksgiving uh we're gonna drop a thanksgiving day special of full gear uh review with me miss man jane tomorrow night right here in the die bar of the iwc guys that's the last call stuff that turkey Hey, producer lady here. Thanks for tuning in. Continue to support us or buy us a drink by following and putting the I in subscribe on Twitch. Or subscribe and review our podcast on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to us. Cheers! I would never have a drink with wrestling on the rock.